your UT admissions guide. Following up on a recent video I released about UT Austin's new short answer questions for uh, freshman fall 2022 applicants. So they released these prompts a lot later than they said that they would, but as I talk about in my blog post that you can find in the information section of this video, along with some examples that may help for this essay topic, uh, I share that UT Austin, they just are not very good at communicating with the public. They have a very haphazard approach to making changes to their admissions process, bringing consistency and continuity between admission cycles is definitely not a strength of theirs. So for whatever reason, their senior bureaucrats or marketing offices, enrollment managers decided to change the topics. Uh, that's a black box that we will never be able to access. So the major short answer question is the same. There's a new kind of hybrid question about leadership diversity. And then the topic of this video is the new, what I'm calling the change the world topic. And so this video is two parts. The first part, I'll share some initial thoughts, criticisms, concerns, uh, complications with this new topic. It really is just, um, man, maybe one of the worst essay topics I've ever seen from any university. Certainly the worst essay topic I've seen since my 10 years uh, in and around uh, observing UT admissions. So that's what it is. And uh, y'all have to be the recipients of whatever the senior bureaucrats decided was just a wonderful idea for you to write about. The topic is the core purpose of the University of Texas at Austin is to quote, transform lives for the benefit of society. The prompt asks, please share how you believe your experiences at UT Austin will prepare you to quote, change the world after you graduate. And of course, for anyone that's been to a UT football game knows that UT's mantra, which they branded uh, and copyrighted back in 2005, is what starts here changes the world. So they're essentially asking you to reflect on and evaluate this statement. Um, there's a lot of problems with this question, uh, namely it's very vague. And as I'll talk about with the specific tips I provide, it's super unclear exactly what they're asking for, right? Like the previous short answer questions from the last two cycles was discuss your majors, which remains the same. Talk about a leadership experience. Okay, like I know what to do for that. Like you talk about a leadership experience in your family, community, school, et cetera. There's this third topic about uh, an identity, interest, or perspective that will kind of bring perspectives to classroom discussions or enrich uh, UT Austin's learning environment. And so you have an idea of like what they're actually asking for. And so I think that one of the factors of this question is it's very vague, it's very um, convoluted. Uh, there's also a couple kind of critical interpretations I'll take of it. One of them is a, uh, a really bitter and delightful irony that I'm like 100% certain that it's 17 or 18 years old, the, you know, senior admissions officials at UT Austin, like, never dream to become admissions counselors, like, making up essay topics. And so, like, I know for me, like, at age 18, and I've actually, I've never, ever read an essay or ever in the thousands of students I've ever talked to, ever met a high school senior or junior who's like, oh, like, when I grow up, I really want to be an admissions counselor and, like, work in higher education. Like, that never happens. You have this, like, bizarre situation where, People that like may or may not be transforming the lives of others by making you guys write about how you think you're going to change the world when in their own lived realities, they're making up super silly essay topics for tens of thousands of students to write. And so like for myself at age 18, I, I never imagined I might be changing the world and being like a, a YouTube personality or a blogger uh, by criticizing stupid essay questions that universities require you to write. Uh, but, you know, this is where we are, and we'll just simply never know who made up these essay topics. Um, and, yeah, so you're just going to have to navigate this the best that you can. I also have um, some pretty significant concerns about what this topic means for inclusion, for access, for diversity recruitment, because, as I argue in my new book, Surviving the College Admissions Madness, the more requirements, particularly essays, that universities uh, put as hoops for students to jump through, it uh, is a direct consequence of diminishing their uh, inclusion and making their campus as accessible as possible. So whenever universities require lots of topics or silly topics, it has, uh, you know, some complicating factors for their supposed mission of wanting to, you know, recruit the top students from across all Texas high schools, regardless of their socioeconomic class or, uh, you know, other biographical information. So I think there's a lot of problems with um, diversity recruitment. 
The other thing too, and I think this is kind of a, a, a it's definitely speculative and I'm calling it an insidious interpretation is that this change the world prompt, I have a feeling that the UT's marketing and recruitment team kind of had a say in this topic. I've also seen this branding pop up in other parts of UT Austin's website where they started to incorporate this change the world language into things like the freshman research initiative or other honors programs, for example. And so I think that this is part of a broader branding scheme. So like by requiring you to write this essay, they're sort of making you or encouraging you to imagine how you will be at UT's campus. And I use this analogy in my blog post where it's like going to a car dealership. And the idea of a car dealer is they want you to imagine, you know, you taking home a new Mercedes or like if you're a wife surprising your husband and kids, so like, you know, hey, come on, just come on in for a test drive. And this new prompt is sort of like the equivalent of encouraging you or basically requiring you to take a test drive and imagine and visualize yourself at UT Austin's campus. And a theory I have is that this is going to sort of soften you up for the aggressive recruitment and marketing techniques that UT Austin and universities everywhere are starting to deploy. So you have um, big data gather, uh, big data algorithm and, and gathering techniques that are helping to um, produce you know highly targeted marketing funnels and recruit uh, you know highly specific types of students. And so I think there is this kind of subtle seed that they're planting because after all, like who wouldn't want to like change the world and like leave a legacy on this planet or in humanity? you know, after, uh, you know, you know, decades or many years into the future, whenever you leave, you know, whenever you pass away, right? So um, I think that there are some just very bizarre uh, aspects of this essay topic that I'm still going to unpack. I also think that the average essay is going to be very poorly written because the topic is broad, it's vague, it's unclear whether they want you to like project into the future or like talk about a concrete thing you've done in the past. And so, um, yeah, that's problematic. The other issue that there's another assumption baked into this question, there's a real, and I'm not even someone that talks about privilege. I mean, you don't really hear me use that kind of language in my videos or in my books, but there is a, a real assumption of privilege here that like UT Austin had 67,000 applications. They admitted 17 or 18,000 students last year. There's a, a subset of those students, maybe 20% that received need-based financial aid, but unless you come from a really wealthy family, it's, it's a reality that most of you are going to be taking on thirty dollars or $40,000 of student loan debt. And so it sort of smacks of privilege when we live in a society where millennials and Generation Z are the first cohorts that are less likely to, to die wealthier than their parents. And then asking students to write about how they're going to change the world when honestly, like most recent graduates in a pandemic are just trying to stay afloat, maintain their you know physical well-being, their, their sanity, and so a lot of students are just trying to find a living wage in their industry, like let alone their dream job or their dream life. Um, so it just seems to me as like just astonishingly tone deaf uh, for an admissions office that despite their flaws, like is, is quite diverse. Like I don't dispute that there is a wide variety of perspectives within UT Austin's office of admissions, but it just happens when you work in a bureaucracy, you just lose touch with their lived realities of the sorts of students that are going to have to be writing these essays. And so uh, one of my hopes is I really hope a student writes an essay that just reads, I can change the world if you don't saddle me with a lifetime of crippling student loan debt. Can I have a full ride, please? So if anyone has the courage to write that essay, like, please let me know how it turns out for you. So without further ado, I will share with you eight tips to help you um, wrestle this new change the world essay topic. My first piece of advice, since it's a really bad question, is to reframe or expand the question. So one of the key phrases in the prompt reads, to transform the lives for the benefit of society. And so this is a kind of a vision statement that's part of UT's core purpose. And their core purpose also has a subset of core values, which you can find online. It's kind of like their, their mission statement. And so they have six core values about learning, discovery, freedom, leadership, individual opportunity, and responsibility that have kind of different platitudes about expanding knowledge, finding truth, um, excelling with integrity, being open to different ideas, working with diverse populations. And so if you're having trouble like making more specific what it means to transform the lives to benefit society, think about addressing some of these other related questions. You can also just reframe the question entirely, and that's a theme that's going to be throughout this video is this prompt actually really reminds me of Carnegie Mellon's college experience prompt. And that prompt asks, as you think ahead to the process of learning during your college years, 
how will you define a successful college experience? So that's essentially what this question is asking. Like, what do you want from UT? And I think a, a relatively straightforward way to answer this question is to reframe it as simply like a, a why UT essay in the same way that a New York University asks, like, why are you applying to NYU? Or Rice asks, why are you applying to Rice? So um, you could use this. So the takeaway from this first piece of advice is that College essay questions are merely an invitation to write, and they're not like a box that's supposed to constrain you or to think like, oh, am I like answering the topic? It's just like write whatever comes to mind and try your best to answer the topic. My second piece of advice, and this is true of college applications everywhere, is try not to repeat content written in the other essays. So maybe you're in your essay A or the other short answers. Um, but it's going to be a bit of a challenge because there's necessarily going to be some overlap by thinking about how your academic interests might help change the world or how if you've been serving or you've been a leader or you have some aspect of your identity or background that, you know, contribute to diverse learning environments. Uh, so you might have to be, you know, think a little bit outside the box or creatively about um, addressing some of these different topics from varied angles. And so um, you want to be as, as economical and efficient with your word limits as possible. And so you definitely don't want to write like a major short answer and then just like recreate the same thing for change the world. So just be cautious about um, doing unique responses for each of the essay topics. So I think third, my piece of advice is the most straightforward way to answer this prompt is instead of worrying about some like really vague abstract future at five or 10 or 20 years, 30 years down the line, instead think in the past or in the recent present and relate previous experiences to your future goals. And so reframe this vague prompt by simply making it concrete. Because generally speaking, effective college essays re reference specific experiences, memories, anecdotes in your life. So consider sharing about a time you solved a problem, collaborated with a group or a project, uh, or created something that helped simplify your lives or the lives of others. You can also argue using a simile, something like this experience in the past is like this problem that I hope to solve in the future. And showing how you're already solving problems now can help you connect why UT can help you solve problems in the future. Uh, fourth, answering the prompt directly. So I'm not sure this is gonna be the best strategy because like the absolute biggest cliche when I was reviewing essays for UT Austin, first drafts that I often see and like lines that I just immediately remove as soon as I see it is this, like what starts here changes the world. There's so many essays that say like, oh, like what starts here changes the world. I was inspired when I went to the UT Austin versus Oklahoma State football game or like my older brother was at the 2014 commencement when William McRaven gave his inspirational speech and I've been a lifelong Longhorn fan or whatever. So it's just it's like the number one banality and cliche that so many students write. So it's just like another ridiculous aspect of this essay topic is they've taken this cliche and now they're making 65,000 plus students write about it. So I don't think you should answer the prompt directly. I don't think you should lead or conclude with like what starts here changes the world. It's just like, like a weird piece of marketing that has become like, it's, it's like a really inspirational quote that's become so commoditized and so capitalized upon that it's almost lost a lot of its force and value. But I do think if you want to write about this, then at least like go and watch Admiral McRaven's speech at commencement or read the text rather than just simply referencing empty platitudes. I think Brene Brown also referenced this in her uh, commencement speech as well. So um, check out those two things and try and find some like related topics or maybe even explore the history a little bit more about where this uh, mantra came from. Five. One option is to narrow the scope of the language changing the world and narrow it down to changing your community, neighborhood, or family. And you could also discuss an issue of like local importance that might plug into a broader global level conversation. So this is a variation on the think global, act local mantra. And narrowing, narrowing the scope of the prompt might help it make it a little bit less overwhelming about having to solve world hunger or climate change if you can address, for example, homelessness in your community or a recycling program in your hometown. And it also helps to avoid vagueness or generalities about like kind of helping the planet in 250 to 300 words. And when you can point to a specific issue or problem in community, you can make your essay more concrete by suggesting how you've already engaged with that problem to help solve it or how you help to address issues, um, related issues in the future. And you can also plug in how you to your college education can help you understand broader 
uh, structural or global contexts, which is often essential for addressing these local issues in your community. And so you can also just write like a straightforward issue of importance essay where you discuss things like social inequality, mental health, energy extraction and storage, medical ethics, like advances in bio biological engineering, um, and use this as a way to tie in your change the world idea into your major or some extracurricular activity. My next piece of advice is you convert this into kind of a why UT statement and include specific UT courses, certificates, study abroad, research opportunities, and so on um, that can help you address these local or global problems. Because one benefit of a UT education, which I'm still very much a believer in, even if they make you write dumb essay topics, is that it does provide a world-class education regardless of your major or department. So taking advantage of interdisciplinary certificates or courses outside of your major uh, will help equip you with a variety of perspectives and tools necessary for addressing these really interconnected and complex global issues. And so most of these essays, I think, should try and find some way to incorporate how UT can specifically help them in the future. And so I really think this essay is kind of a why UT topic in disguise. My seventh piece of advice is instead of thinking about your dream job, try and visualize your dream life. And so I've used this dream life language because, again, a dream job for many is just like simply a luxury and something that will be unattainable for many people for socioeconomic or, or family reasons. And so instead, like, you can still use your imagination to think about what your dream life might look like. For example, like, what changes would need to happen at a societal level to ensure fairness or access to basic necessities? What might a world look like where everyone can receive a high-quality education at a low or affordable price? And what steps might be needed to achieve those long-term, almost kind of utopian type of goals? And so imagining your dream life can help situate your place in solving these, um, these problems. And this may or may not be a dream job or a job at all, but you can also frame it as kind of like your calling, uh, which also opens up the possibility of like nonprofit service, helping change the world through art and music, or even becoming a social entrepreneur. And so in a way, this essay topic kind of reminds me of the old Applied Texas SAC that no university requires anymore um, that asks students, you have a ticket in your hand, where will you go? So my final tip for this uh, essay topic is if like, you're just, just have no idea what to write and if all else fails and you're feeling totally stumped, honestly, like just write a second essay about your major leadership or diversity. Um, and how you can bring a unique perspective to campus. Um, I think a lot of students, again, are going to worry about how to like, answer the prompt, but um, again, these essay questions are simply an invitation to write. So you can use this essay topic as kind of a catch-all miscellaneous thing to write about whatever it is you want to write about. Um, and again, if you're struggling with this prompt, just remind yourself it's not your fault that you have to write this essay. Um, but hey, hey, look, if you're feeling really courageous, maybe write about how you hope to change the world by speaking truth to power for unresponsive bureaucracies who make you submit to their whims um, and their inconsistent policies, because this won't be the first time that an organization, an institution, or a corporation is telling you to do something that you don't really have a say in the matter. And that's a, a really big theme of my new book, Surviving the College Admissions Madness, um, which you can pick up on Amazon. Um, you can also reach out to me at kevin at techsubmissions.com um, with any questions. So I hope that you found this video um, insightful and productive. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your college applications, and I hope that you have a great day.